Hello everyone and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. I have been so excitedly working on corn. Um, when I get a new project like this sometimes I just can hardly sit still and that's sort of been the way it has been with this corn. And so today we're going to talk about how to store corn. You see that I've got some buckets here and I have our uh, bag of corn here, our first bag that I bought. I'll tell you about that one in just a minute. And we're going to show you how we store corn and then we're going to nixtamalize some corn. So we have an adventure ahead of us and this all goes to self-reliance, food security and emergency preparedness. Sorry to interrupt, this is a technical announcement. As I came home from work today and started editing this video, I realized, oh my gosh, it's way too long. And so I'm going to cut it in half. So the half that you're going to see today is how we store corn. And then the half that you're going to see tomorrow will explain about nixtilization. So thanks and I hope you enjoy it. Because doing the corn the way we're going to learn today, and many of you already know how to do it, the nixtilization, um, frees up the niacin, which is a B12 complex vitamin. It also adds additional calcium and um, some amino acids. And so the uh, nixtamalization increases the nutrition of corn. And boy, from what I have learned so far with my experimenting, that's the only way I'm going to do corn from now on. And it just is so fun and so delicious. So first of all, we're going to show you how to store corn. Now, um, this bag of corn, you will notice, is for cattle, sheep, and goats. We got this at Tractor Supply at a feed store. Well, what about corn from a feed store? Is it okay for humans to eat that? Well, the answer is that it depends. And so we go to the ingredients list to see what is there. If it says only corn, then we're okay. I had looked it up online and read everything I could read about it online and I just we just found it. It took both Jim and me to find it. It's on the very bottom and it is 100% whole corn. And so if you can find feed corn that is like that, then you know it's okay. If you are okay using it, well I certainly am. And I did a little bit of an experiment. <laughs> I pulled some of the corn out, and we'll get a close-up of this corn closer in just a minute. Uh, the camera is on a tripod right now. Um, and so I began sorting through the corn, um, one handful at a time, and boy was that ever tedious. This is the waste from two pounds of this corn. And I weighed this, it's just a little bit over um, two ounces. So it's about an ounce and a fourth, an ounce and a half per pound of, of what I would say waste. Sorting through uh, broken kernels and um, debris, and most of the debris was part of the corn plant itself. And um, the corn was very, very clean. When I washed it the first time, I was really quite surprised. It's very clean. The water almost ran clear from the beginning. There wasn't any muddy water or anything like that. So I was completely satisfied. I will show you a close-up of the corn um, once we get this area cleared off just a little bit. The first thing that we're going to do is talk about how we are going to store the corn. Now, um, because corn attracts weevils and other corn-eating insects, what we are going to do is ensure that no insect life can survive inside these barrels once we put the corn in there. And we're going to do that with dry ice. Dry ice is one of the most effective ways to um, preserve grains and things like rice and corn and beans. We use dry ice a lot. And I used it a lot in my science classes as well. So if you are not familiar with how to use rice, I'm going to give you some safety tips today. But first of all, I'm going to show you just a little bit about how dry ice works. So our local grocery store carries dry ice. You generally have to ask for it. And you can ask for it at the meat counter or just up front in the at the 
information desk. So we have two chunks and this is just a little bit over a pound. So I'm going to break off a piece if I can and show you how it works. And um, we don't ever handle dry ice except with gloves. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in this jar. And I'm going to put some of these dry ice pieces in here. And I want for you to pay attention to what it does. So notice that it is sublimating. It is going directly from a solid to a gas. That's called sublimation. And once that this part fills up and it comes out the side, it goes down here because it is heavier than air. Now imagine, and it will sublimate just in the air. It does not need water to sublimate. You can see these little pieces right here um, are also giving off those fumes. They're scooting around on the countertop. Um, <clears throat> imagine that this now is sublimating not in the water, just by itself at the bottom of this bucket. So it is filling the bucket with this carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide will displace all of the air in the bucket. And so it's like adding oxygen absorbers or it's like vacuum sealing. Only this time we are doing it with carbon dioxide that is moving the air out. There's no air in here right now because it has all been displaced by the carbon dioxide. And um, then it takes, it will take a couple of hours, three hours, for the dry ice to completely sublimate without water. And so we're going to put dry ice on the bottom, fill the bucket with corn, and then we'll place a lid so that the dry ice so that the carbon dioxide can come out. We don't want to seal it. Um, I was witness to a terrible accident when I was in sixth grade when one of my classmates took a little piece of dry ice and put it down in a soda bottle and then stuck a cork in the top of the soda bottle. And that soda bottle exploded and hit him right in the forehead and called, caused a piece of glass, hit him in the forehead and caused a great big old gash. And so it will build up pressure. We don't want that. All we want is for it to be filled completely with the carbon dioxide. And then we tighten up the lid. And then um, there's no air in there for any bugs to survive whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And Jim is going to come around and um, help. So now all is in here is carbon dioxide. I'm going to pour it out. Is that fun or what? can actually see it. Yep. Wow. I know. That's science. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to set one barrel down. And we're going to weigh out a little bit of this. We want about a quarter of a pound. That'll do it. 5.6. And so, Jim, I'm going to give these gloves to you so you can. I'm just going to move this aside. Hand off hand on this. Yeah. And actually, if you want to break it up in smaller pieces uh, so that it will sublimate quicker, that would be fine too. That's what it looks like inside the uh, bucket. And you can see the carbon dioxide coming up. And we're going to go ahead and use a pan. I'm going to cut this down. Don't you think that would help? That would probably help. We 
got corn all over the floor. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and put the lid like that. And maybe one of the things you can do is pound down that, 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 something like that. And then when you want to find out if it's, uh, if all of it has sublimated. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so if you want to find out if it's sublimated, lift up the bottom or lift up the bucket, feel the bottom and see if it's uh, still cold or not. If it isn't and it's done, go ahead and uh, pound down the lip. All right, so can, let's get this one off the counter. We're going to set that aside and let it just do its thing for the next two or three hours. We'll be checking on it. Now, another safety thing that you need to pay close attention to is to watch that bucket. And um, if the lid starts to bulge, if the bucket starts to bulge, you know you have pressure building in there and the gas is not being able to escape. So you need to burp it. And if you think it is all sublimated and put that lid down, continue to watch for a while. And, um, and so that um, if it, if it uh, bubbles again, if it swells again, you can burp it. And so, because we don't want that to explode. All right, now I'm keeping this one in the house. two gallon. It would. Oh. I'm going to be going through this corn so fast that I am not concerned about bug damage to these two small bells, so I'm not going to put any dry ice in here. And we're done. So I'm going to be going through this corn really fast. I'm not concerned about bugs. I'm going to keep these two in the house. So this is the rest of the 50 pound bag. And I'm just going to, there we go, just put the lids on. I'll have Jim get those later. So here is a close-up of the corn right out of the bag. I just poured it right out of the bag. You can see how clean it is. Now the size, the kernel size is varied from small to um, large. Here's a large one. See if I can find a little teeny tiny one. There were a bunch of little teeny tiny ones too. So um, I've had a lot of fun over the last few days working with this corn. I couldn't wait, so I just went down to the feed store and got a bag. But I had so many references to Azure Standard uh, to order that I went there. Uh, someone told me about that actually several weeks ago and I checked it out then. So I went back to Azure Standard and sure enough, they have a, an excellent price on yellow dent corn. It's going to be much more uniform in size, I assume, and without as much of the debris as uh, this bag is. But I've been able to work with this corn just fine. So I've ordered a bag of the yellow dent corn and it doesn't say dent. I'm assuming that it's dent. It's field corn, so that's usually dent corn. And um, it will be here in about 10 days, I think. So I'll show you that when that comes in as well.